So I'm glad that Tim released that word because in order for our, in, for our discernment to increase, if, if there's anything clouding us, and tonight we're going to talk about open doors and how to you know, make sure that we don't have open doors, um, that can hinder our discernment. And, you know, God wants us to increase in our discernment because we need to discern between good and evil. Amen? So I'm just going to pray. So, Lord, we just thank you for the power of your blood. We thank you, Jesus, that you died on the cross, shed your blood to set us free. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses and delivers. And we loose the power of your blood here tonight. And Lord, we bind every demonic force of, of witchcraft, intimidation, um, idolatry, python, anything that would cause distraction. We take authority over it now. Religious spirit, we bind you and render you ineffective and powerless. And Lord, we loose your spirit of truth. We thank you that you've given us authority to tread over serpents and scorpions, but that's not even our focus, Lord. Our focus is you, because you are a good God, and we worship you here tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So um, tonight, you, you know, last, uh, last week my husband spoke on forgiveness, which is really critical and important because if you have, if you have unforgiveness in your heart, you're not going to walk in freedom, right? So we need to know that we have to address that. And, and unforgiveness, as you all know, is it's progressive a lot of times. You know, if it's somebody you don't care about, that's one thing. But when it's a family member or somebody close to you, you know, you, when your heart is really hurt, it, there's progression in your healing. And, and the Lord will walk you through that. So don't think that, you, you know, you didn't do what you need to do. It's just that it, sometimes it takes a little longer, right? But we know that we choose to forgive. Amen? So tonight, I want to address demonic entry points. And, um, you know, we all have, you know, and I know a lot of us know this. For some of you, this, this may be your first time hearing this, okay? But it's good to review all this stuff because I love going over um, a lot of this just to make sure my life is in order, Okay, because none of us arrive. I don't care how long you're saved. I don't care how long you think you know Jesus or more than Jesus. We all need this. Okay, and um, so the enemy, as you see up there, what's a legal right? It's, it's where we give the demonic opportunity to basically wreak havoc in our life. Really, is what it is. And so, um, you know, I was thinking about this part of a long-term pr protection plan that God has given us is making sure that we don't have open doors that we don't have open doors in our life. And um, let me tell you, unforgiveness is a huge open door. Self-righteousness is a huge open door. And so we, we uh, you know, and I'll, I'll discuss uh, entry points in a moment, but the devil always wants to sabotage everything good in our life. He always wants to destroy whatever we have that's good. But the Lord has a plan for us, as does the enemy. The Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper and have an expected end. But you know, he has also demonic plans of destruction. But again, we are the head and not the tail. But if we don't have an understanding of our identity in Christ, and if we don't have an understanding of God's character and his amazing love that he has for each and every one of us, then there's going to be a problem, okay? And then we can get like where we think everything's a demon, and not everything's a demon, right? But when there is a demon that's manifesting, that's when we address it. But this is how we're, we're going to decide, and, and we'll see tonight. So as my husband can tell you, I have a habit of locking doors every night. Everything that we have, I lock doors, okay? I grew up in inner city. I lock doors. I don't care if you're coming in my house for 10 minutes, I'm locking the door, okay? So if I'm home alone, I lock the door. If Peter goes to throw the garbage out, I lock the door. I lock the door, all right? And so I was thinking about that. No one enters into my home who is not invited, okay? So we don't want anyone to enter into our home, this house, my, this habitation, who's not invited. And you know that he's a thief, he's slick, and he comes in as an angel of light, but we have to be aware of his tactics, all right? And so we have to be diligent to keep the doors shut. And, um, and it, you know, it, 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 it obviously will make it much more difficult for the enemy to have access to us. And, and, you know, one of the things I was thinking about today is, you know, a lot of us are saved a long time, some not. But, you know, passivity and carnality is a major open door. 
You can go through the motions 15 times a week in church, but play, play the game and do the hallelujahs. But, you know, we're not fooling Jesus. And see, it's time for the game playing to stop if we want to really grow and, and excel in the things of the Lord, right? So the Bible says in Ephesians 4.27 to not give place to the devil. And, um, and when you look up that word, well, first of all, it was, Paul wasn't making a suggestion. It was a command. Do not give place to the devil. Do not allow open doors to come in to attack you. Do not, you know, it's up to us, all right? Remember, he, the Lord has given us great authority, and he, the enemy doesn't want you to know how much authority you really have. So what does he do? He causes distraction. He causes, you know, different things, you know, carnality, sin, different things, so that he dilutes what we have. And so, um, so anyway, I wrote here, it's, it's much easy. I mean, if you ever come under a, a spiritual assault, it's much easier to nip it in the bud, right, than, than as you've gone through it and all hell's breaking loose and now you're trying to break out of it. It's always easier to stop it right at that entry point when you recognize what's happening, and that's what we're going to talk about tonight. So, and, and the enemies, you know, he, he just... You know, he's, he's at, he wants it to bring destruction because he hates the spirit of God within us, all right? And so the brilliance of the light of God is shining over all of us as we're walking in Christ, and that is what the enemy doesn't want, all right? And so um, when you look up the word place, it's tapos in the Greek, and it literally means a specific location or a marked-off location. So obviously, what's that in our life spiritually? It's going to be any place that the enemy knows there's a weak point in our relationships, any, any place there's a re, you know, weak point in our finances, you know, any thought processes. So any area that the enemy knows he can put his finger on and knock you down. You think you have the right of way, and you really don't because you're basically a captive to him. So it's an, identi it's an identifiable location. And, and, and so and that's where he, want, he wants that open door. All right, so we get the point about this open door. And, you know, one time, I, I may, we may have shared this here, I don't remember, but um, I, was, I was doing deliverance on somebody. Actually, I wasn't even planning on having a meeting of deliverance. We were just meeting to talk. And I asked her, we were sitting there, and I remember it was during the holidays, I just wanted to get home. And um, I, I was just asking her certain questions, and I asked her this one question about, her involvement in witchcraft. And when I said that, well, mama mia, all hell broke loose. She starts rocking, then the bookshelf almost fell. I mean, it was just chaotic in my husband's financial office. It was not church, okay? It was his financial, you know, where he does, you know, financial business, right? And I thought, oh, my God. So I called my husband up. I said, I need you to come here now. We need, I need some help. And so and, and we only lived around the corner, you know, from where Peter was working. And... Um, she, my, when my husband opens the door and he comes and she looked at my husband and she went, oh, God, oh, and she starts spitting, you know, but she saw the light on him and she was like, you know, doing one of these things. And I said, honey, I've had those moments, but, but, you know, <laughs> she was just, she just saw the light, you know, and she was spitting. And so when the enemy sees us, he sees the light of God in us. I'm telling you. And, um, but, you know, we had major deliverance with her that day after several hours and because and, she was, her family was steeped in Santeria. And, and as we move forward in this, we're going to talk about different aspects of witchcraft in and, and Santeria and Macumba and different things, okay? But anyway, so ask yourself here right now, even before I get into it, are there any doors that I know of that I need to have shut? You know, I'm always checking my heart. Lord, is there anything? Is there any open area of my heart? All right? So the enemy is so committed to bring destruction to each and every one of us. And sometimes, and this is what I wrote here, the devil is more committed to attack us than most of us are willing to withstand him. Many times we just give in and roll over. And, and we need not. There's a war. The Bible says that we are in the army of God. So if you're in an army, there's warfare that happens, right? There's, there's warfare. And then we have to, when you've done all the stand, you stand. And that's why, like the song my husband was singing, you have to know the word of God. You war with the word. You worship. You take a stand. You may have, you know, heebie-jeebies in your stomach and feeling all scared, but you take a stand and you don't back down. 
So what are some of the doorways? And um, so the first doorway is, op is open is sin. That's an obvious one, right? When we, when we give the enemy, an, you know, we give him that right to, to harass us is when we're in sin. All right, in the scripture, in Romans chapter 6, listen to this. I like the way it's worded in the Passion. It says, sin is a dethroned monarch, right? So you must no longer give it an opportunity to rule over your life. Don't give it an opportunity. We have a choice in this. It's not like, oh, the devil made me do it. You know, I don't have control. That's nonsense. We have control over this. Controlling how... It, wait, wait, hold on. I'm going to read it again. Sin is a dethroned monarch, so you must no longer give it opportunity to rule over your life, controlling how you live and compelling you to obey its desires and cravings. So then, your aunt, you, so then refuse to answer its call to surrender your body as a tool for wickedness. Wow. Instead, passionately answer God's call to keep yielding, see, it's a process, your body to him as one who has now experienced resurrection life. You live now for his pleasure, ready to be used for his noble purpose. And, you know, I, I just want you to know, and I know for those of you who come here, you hear us talk about this often, the Lord loves us. You know, he's not ready to bop us over the head every time we make a mistake. He's on our side. Right? And so he's wooing us. He's drawing us. He's, he's pushing us forward because he loves us. So when these things are getting uncovered, it's not to put you down. It's to say, oh, wait a second. This is an area I need to address so that I can move forward and get healing in my life. See, that's how it is. So, so don't, you know, if, you know, if you feel guilt and condemnation, that's not from the Lord. We know in Romans 8, 1, it says, he says there's no condemnation for those who are in the Lord. But we need to deal with our stuff and stop blaming everybody in the world for our problems, right? So we have to look introspectively first. It may be others have caused a problem, but mostly, you know, we have to look at our own stuff and stop blaming, and that's, you know, I hear that all the time. I mean, even in my own life, you know, and the Lord dealt with me. He says, stop blaming everybody. You had a choice in this. So we have to do that. I've got something in my eye. So, like, you can have unrighteous anger. It doesn't mean you're out smoking a joint, okay? It means you're, you have anger. You're bitter. You can have hatred, lying, unforgiveness, sexual wrongdoing, being very deceptive in many areas, drug and alcohol abuse, drug, you know, um, all types of abuse. You know, and these are common ways that the door is open. And so we have to be careful of that. So right now, Lord, we just ask you to highlight our heart in any area that's not pleasing to you. Lord, your word says that you're not mocked, and you know everything. You see our heart. You know what we're doing. And so, Lord, we ask that you reveal it to us, but bring conviction to our hearts, Father, and show us a path that even brings us into a higher place in you. Amen. The next one I have is generational curses or, um, yeah, generational curses. So we have, uh, now we know generationally, you know, like the doctors get it. Like if you go to a doctor, sorry, I have something in my eye. If you go to a doctor, they usually ask you, what's in your family line? Is there a heart attack? No, I don't need a tissue, thanks. Is there, um, you know, cancer, does that run your family, et cetera? Well, it's the same thing. A lot of families have addiction. A lot of families have drug addiction or, or alcoholism, sexual addiction, you know, all kinds of issues, unforgiveness. You know, we've, I've met families that were just totally, everyone hated each other. The stronghold of hatred in your family. You know, it can be many different things, but the beautiful thing is we can repent. And we can repent on behalf of our ancestors and shut the door. We don't have to live this life. See, God came, Jesus Christ died on the cross to redeem us from the curse of the law. So again, remember, this is a redemptive message. It's not like, oh, Lord, have mercy. You know, I have all these issues. No, Jesus came to set us free, all right? So we have generational issues. And the Bible says in Exodus 20, verse 5, I am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of the father to the third and fourth generation. And that word isn't jealous like, like in a carnal way that he's jealous. He's jealous of, of him you know, loving us so much and wanting the best for us. It's, it's not that wicked kind of a jealousy. So there's a cult involvement. That's the other one. Um, is the next one that is an open door. 
In Deuteronomy, I want you to read this because a lot of people get involved in crazy stuff and witchcraft here. In, in, in Deuteronomy 18, 10 through 12, it says, There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire as a sacrifice, one who uses divination and fortune-telling, one who practices witchcraft, horoscope, one who interprets omens or, sor or is a sorcerer, one who casts a charm or a spell or a medium or a spiritist or a necromancy, necromancer who seeks the dead for everyone who does these things is utterly repulsive to the Lord in the King James it says it's an abomination and because of these detestable practices the Lord your God is driving them out before you so these are things that listen before I got saved I, I mean I grew up in a denominational church I, I I didn't know any any church that had power or authority so I went that route. I got involved in a lot of that new age. I liked it. <laughs> you know, I thought, this is great. And uh, I had no idea that, that it was contrary to the word of God. And, and plus, it causes a lot of you know, aggravation in your life. And you know, I can tell you a lot of stories about that. But the Lord, it, I, I didn't realize. I didn't know that it was wrong. I didn't know. I thought it was fun. I didn't know it was wrong to read your horoscope. I didn't know it was wrong to have your palms read. I didn't know it was wrong to have your charts done. I did it all. It's wrong. I didn't know it was wrong to play with the Ouija board. I didn't know it was wrong. It's witchcraft. And you open yourself up to the demonic realm, okay? Another scripture in Leviticus 19.31 in the Amplified, it says, Don't turn to mediums who pretend to consult the dead or to spiritists who have spirits of divination. Do not seek them out to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Now listen, there are people that are involved in this that really have a, a you know, direct line to Satan. And some of them are really good. So a lot of them is just a ripoff. But, but, you know, if you've ever heard uh, John Ramirez, or y'all, anybody here familiar with John Ramirez? Well, we were just with him in, um, wherever we were, oh, in Pennsylvania. And um, he spoke there, and we all went out to, to uh, dinner with him, and um, he was a Satanist. He was a high-level, top third, three, third level Satanist in New York City, in the barrels there. And, and he loved, he said to us, I love weak Christians because I can get into their mind and I can torment them and bring destruction into their life. You can get him on YouTube and listen to him. He said, I loved it. And, and so when people would come to him, to, for, to, uh, he, they, he would charge about $25,000 to put a curse on people. And so Jesus paid the price with his blood. It's free. I, I had to deal with somebody who had a shaman, would have a shaman come to her house and do all this crazy stuff, and she had to pay $5,000 a month. I said, well, I can come for free and undo everything the shaman did because that's what they just did, release a curse on your house. And so you see, but you have to know what the word says about this stuff. That's against the word of God. And see, it brings destruction to you. It harms you. Initially, it seems good until he hooks you, and then he, he destroys you. And I encourage you, if you can, his name is John Ramirez, go online and listen to his testimony, listen to some of the things. And, and he, was, he was wicked. His goal as a, as a Satanist was to take out the Christians, especially lead, church leaders. And he said, um, you know, and he was serving Satan for a long time, about 20 some odd years, but he said he had a dream. And in the dream, the cross of Jesus, because he started dating a girl who was a Christian, and, and he, um, he has this dream, and, and this cross, the cross of Jesus Christ kept coming to him. And he had to dream three times, and the cross literally pushed Satan back. And, the, and Satan was afraid. He saw in the dream, Satan was afraid of the cross. See, the power in the cross of Jesus, right? I mean, Jesus died on the cross, rose from, you know, rose from the dead, and took the keys away from the enemy. So when, when we're aligned with the Lord, that's why he's saying, I want you to be under my umbrella of protection. I, listen, it's not, a relig it's not being um, religious. Oh, you're so religious. No, baloney. That's the lie of the enemy. It's, Lord, no, I'm going to be aligned with you and obey you, Lord, because then we have all that God has. He says we're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He wants us to walk in the blessing of the Lord. Not be destroyed by the plots and plans of the enemy. And we think we're doing like all Joe Cool over here. And God's and the enemy's destroying us. So, so you know, again, don't, don't read your horoscope. For those of you online, horoscope is not okay. Fortune telling, not okay. Ouija board, ESP, um, you know, role playing. And I'm going to say it, yoga. 
fantasy games, Dungeons and Dragons, satanic worship. Um, and so you say, okay, now here she goes with this yoga. What it is, and we have a phenomenal DVD, y'all can watch, of yogis that have said, and people that are involved in it, that said, you cannot do yoga apart from, be, from spirituality. And uh, it opens you up to a kundalini spirit. And David can give testimony because you took yoga and all your back pain. And when we, you, I think you got delivered from it, right? You had no more back pain. So anyway, there's, that's a whole other teaching. All right, so the next one is trauma. So when you've had any kind of trauma, accidents, near-death experiences, divorce, abandonment, rape, child abuse, listen, it could, it's not, that doesn't necessarily mean it's your fault. But any kind of trauma, right, injuries, I mean, you know, it doesn't even have to be a major thing. An operation, it could. I'm not saying if you had that, now you have a spirit. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is it could be an open door, especially if you're not having fruit in your life. The next one is a death wish. I mean, I, I had this before I was saved. I used to pray that I was dead. You know, I had, I desire, I would, uh, like suicidal fantasies. You know, you don't want to live because you're depressed. And so developing an attitude of wanting to die or trying to commit suicide. And I didn't ever try to commit suicide, really, but I would, you know, just forget it. Just certain things you do that you hope you die when you did it and blah, blah, blah. But, but suicidal fantasies. You know, you just think you're better off dead than alive. You have to renounce that. And we're going to pray through some of this stuff. All right, so then we have drugs and alcohol. Um, do I have that up there? All right, well, drugs and alcohol, addictions. All right, it could be food. It could be shopping. It could be uh, plastic surgery. It could be exercise. Whatever, it, whatever you do that becomes an, uh, it's an idolatrous thing, that, that, that's all your focus. You're focusing on that more than Jesus Christ. That's a problem. All right, and then what happens is we look to, you know, drugs and alcohol. Many of us here were involved in that. We look to that as a way of escape, as that's what's going to give us our peace. It's, it's a counterfeit affection. It's false. It doesn't, it gives you, you know, peace for a season. But then, you know, I remember when I got saved, I said, Lord, this stuff better work. I said, because, you know, we had a little help from our friends over here. And if uh, this isn't working, you know, I need help. Because if you're battling with depression and hopelessness, you know, it's, it's awful, right? But that's the beauty of the Lord. He comes to set the captives free. And it's a progress. It's progressive. It's, it's, but you know what? You, I don't know about you, but I was, I, I was on fire for the devil. You know, when you're going to live for the devil, you live for him. You know, you're going to, and we have to be on fire for Jesus. No, but when, when, when we're in a church, you know, we don't want to be too crazy over here. Honey, you're either hot or cold. But if you're lukewarm, he spits you out of his mouth. You get, you know, you don't get the results that you need. It's not have it your way. It's his way. And so, now, I put down rock music. I couldn't remember. What's the music? Rap music and all this crazy stuff that's out there. There are, mu there are songs that, that really encourage suicide and, or sexual promiscuity. You know, I mean, there's some foul music out there. What are you listening to? What are you listening to if you're listening to music? And uh, I'm not saying you only can listen to Christian. That's my preference. I don't want to listen to anything. M music is so spiritual. And I mean, you know, and so if I'm going to listen to, you know, especially some of the Western music, if you like Western, good for you. But if some of the Western music, you know, about I'm my bleeding heart, you know, and you're hearing about how sad everybody is, now you want to commit suicide. If you're already sad, don't listen to that. But see, here's the thing. We want to listen to, to music that's going to be uplifting. So. Anyway, I'm just saying, all right? So that can be, you no. Know, listen, I, I, in one of the deliverance sessions, I had, this girl was so bound and she liked Fleetwood Mac. Mac? Yeah. And she had a thing with Stevie Nicks. Yeah. And so I heard the Lord say, you have, she has to break a soul tie with Stevie Nicks. Because nothing was budging. She wasn't getting set free. And she had a soul tie through listening to the music. And she really loved this music, right? And it wasn't until she renounced it that she got delivered from the assignment of the enemy. That's the power of music. So, again, so these, these are open doors. These could be open doors in your life, your life online, or your family members. But these are things that you want to make sure you shut the door, but not to be afraid of it either. The Lord, you have Holy Spirit in you, and he shows you, and he guides you, right? 
The other one is now we have curses. Now, what I'm talking about here are spoken curses. You know, we're in a decade of pay, P-E-Y, it's a Hebraic era of pay. And death and life are in the power of our tongue. And we need to really be extra careful. We always had to be, but watch what you're saying. Why? You know, we, we're either going to prophesy over our life or we're going to curse our lives. We're going to prophesy over our families or we're going to curse them, you know, and speak life. And so that's really important. So um, what did I write here? Also, pra witchcraft practice against her. All right. So, um, yeah, so you don't want to, you don't want to um, speak negative against people and curse them. You don't want to speak that about yourself, all right? So life and death are in the power of our tongue. Right. And we, the Bible also says in Proverbs that we're snared by the words of our mouth. And remember, you know, the devil watches everything that we're saying and doing, especially when we're releasing curses against people and, and cutting and, you know, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. It comes back on you. Yeah. <laughs> He's just better. I mean, that's just the way he works. And, but, but it's really, and so when we're praying and we're, we're decreeing every word curse that's coming against us to fall to the ground, the Lord covers us with his blood and he protects us. But again, we have to, again, you know, that's the, the trick of the enemy. He just wants us to fall into that trap and retaliate. And, you know, and, and two wrongs don't make a right. You don't retaliate in the flesh you, or carnality, you know, in the carnal way, rather. You, you, you retaliate through prayer, through worship. I mean, you draw a line in the sand. I'm not, ex I'm not expecting anybody to roll over and play dead either. You know, you just take it, be abused. But there's a, a, a line we draw. But there's so much power in our prayer life and the words that we declare. But I've seen it over and over and over again of how we curse ourselves. Over and over again, we, and we really have to be careful about what our words, what we're saying. And that is a major open, open door. I'll never amount to anything. I'll always be poor. I'll always be a pauper. I'll always have heartache in my life. You're cursing yourself. You can say, no, but I'm just explaining what's happening. You can explain what's happening, but you don't have to keep repeating it every day. Right? Speak life. Just say, no, I'm declaring the reverse of what's going on in my life. I always have a rotten marriage. I always have rotten kids. No, no, bless your children. You know, prophesy what you see in your kids. Don't, don't, pro don't decree what, you know, or, or curse them by what's going on. Speak the opposite. So the other thing is rebellion. The Bible says in 1 Samuel, rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. I know none of us here has ever been rebellious, right? I mean, it's so easy to just revolt, <laughs> and especially now what's going on with out, out, out in the world and what you see, so much rebellion and defiance and, and disrespect. All right, I'll, I'll say one. When President Trump was speaking, uh, Nancy Pelosi stood up, and what'd she do? She tore up the papers there. That had to be such rebellion and such a spirit of witchcraft. I don't care whether you like President Trump or not. That was witchcraft. That was rebellion. And, and, and now these are leaders as the head, you know, they're the leaders over our country that's releasing that into our country. Are you kidding me? You don't do that kind of stuff. But then you see the pe who, these kids hitting parents, these kids hitting, t hitting teachers. Are you kidding me? See, when we grew up, our parents would beat our behinds if we acted that way. And there's a lot of spoiled brats out there that have not been disciplined, just saying. Because the Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of the children, but it, drives, uh, but it takes the rod of correction to drive it far from them. I'm not talking about abuse. I'm talking about a good smack on their behinds. There's just so many fresh kids out there that I thought, oh, Lord Jesus, if, I swear if I was their mother. But, but, and I'm not talking abuse. I'm just talking being firm, not allowing a four-year-old to tell you what to do. That's ridiculous. Oh, don't get me started on that one because there's so many kids, you're hurting them. You're hurting them. They have to learn yes and no. And so, they're, so you're, 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 what you're ha what's happening is you're, you're encouraging and you're developing a streak of rebellion. And so, and, all right, so, all right, for those who were disciplined, so most of us, um, we then didn't have a, um, uh, an understanding of our relationship with Jesus. 
And so we went off. And so if you have parents that are too much, too strict, too controlling, very demeaning, disrespectful, that causes rebellion too. But the Bible has a lot to say about raising up our kids, right? And so, you know, listen, my parents did the best that they could, but I, I was, you know, rebellious. I wasn't listening. I did my own thing. And guess what? It hurt me more than it hurt my mother. It hurt my mother seeing that. But a lot of wrong choices. So rebellion is as, as think of it, it says it's, it's as serious as witchcraft. And, and so you can be rebellious on your job. I'm not listening to what they're saying. I'm not doing what they want. I'll make up my own rules. How many of us have done that or are still doing that? I float in that really well. I'm not listening to you. I'll make up my own rules. I'm going to do what I want to do. That's rebellion. I didn't think anything wrong if I didn't like the rule wherever I was at. I'm doing what I want to do. I'm not listening to this. That's not okay. And, and it, you know, you get in a lot of trouble from that. But it, see here, the most important thing is it's, it's dishonorable to the Lord. Right. And, and I'm telling you, and the reason I'm staying here a little bit, because we, so much is happening, in, even in the church, even in the workplace. And so in 1 Samuel 15, 23, it says, For rebellion is as serious as the sin of, wit, of divination and fortune-telling, and disobedience is as serious as false religion and idolatry. See, because when you're rebellious, then you're disobedient. You're not listening. You're not listening to what the Word is saying. Well, you know what? I'll do it my way. You know what? It's not a big deal. Yeah, it is a big deal. What's, let me ask you something. Where's your fruit? How's your fruit? I don't care what you say. I don't care how many scriptures you can quote. I want to, know the, I want to see the fruit. And so Deuteronomy 5.16 says, Honor and respect and obey and care for your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you so that your days on earth may be prolonged and so that it may go well with you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. That's powerful. Now, for some of you may say, well, and, and my husband teaches on this a lot, well, what about when there's abuse? Of course, we're not asking you to stay in any kind of an abusive situation. But there's forgiveness that has to take place and, and, and also still an honoring. Not that you're honoring the abuse, but you're honoring the parent, you know, the parent from afar. You know, or some of you, you may have to not have any, in, you know, close uh, in contact with them. But even I, I remember the Lord told me about this particular scripture about honoring authority figures. Because I didn't like authority figures. I had an issue with anyone in authority, so I didn't listen. Now I'm in authority. You know, I didn't listen to authority figures. And I just always shied away or I just didn't care for them. Because uh, growing up in, in school issues, you know, I had a lot of issues with authority figures. And they, they caused a lot of problems in my life. And I resented them. So therefore, what happens if you don't deal with your heart, you project that onto other authority figures, you see? And once I repented for my disdain I had for authority figures, God brought healing and, and shifted that whole thing around. Many of us feel that way towards cops. I'm grateful for cops, but I didn't like them. They were mean and nasty to me. They always stopped me. I always got in trouble. But you know what? What? If you were done with the Maybe. But what happened is I had to repent. See, again, not all, not all authority figures are bad, right? So what we need authority because authority brings um, safety and security. So I had a lot of issues here that I needed to get right with, I'm just saying. And that I just, it was a protective mechanism. That's how I, I thought that, that I'm going to protect myself. I didn't know that God is my refuge and he's my very present help in time of trouble. And so God had to really redirect it. But you know what? I was willing. I thought, Lord, my life is so screwed up. It, whatever, my way, that whatever I've chosen is not working. So I rather, you know, they're telling me you're the way, even though it made absolutely no sense. But, Lord, I'd rather do it your way. So help me. I had no clue. I didn't know where born again went to church. And so, you know, the Lord started showing me stuff. So that was something. I just said, Lord, help me. I choose to surrender to you. Show me your way. Let me be honorable before you. 
because he had to deal with the rejection. That was another other thing. Rejection's a major open door. And so what happens is when you can have in utero rejection, when your mother's pregnant for you, she may not have wanted you, or may, she may be was, uh, pregnant out of wedlock, and you have all this fear, you have all this stuff going on. And so baby picks up a lot of this stuff, right? So you can have a, not just rejection issues, an array of things, right? But rejection, what happens, like let's say your parents aren't showing you a whole lot of love, your teachers aren't, and so you have expected rejection, perceived rejection, and then there's that spirit of rejection. So a lot of times, this was something I had to deal with. I just had an expectation that wherever I went, I was going to have rejection issues. That had to get shifted. I had to repent. I didn't even know I had that. And so I had to repent for all that stuff and, and, and get healing in my heart. So for some of you, you may think, wow, you know, that's my problem. You know, you walk in a room, you think everybody's talking about you. Then you're aggravated with them and you want to tell them off. They didn't even say a word to you. They were looking at somebody else, you know, and you're like, who are they looking at? You know, and so I know no one's ever done that here, right? And anybody online, you ever think you were, someone was talking about you? And so, you know, you're not feeling approved and, and there's negative responses. And how many times does that go through your mind? They're talking about me. I know, I know they don't like me. I know... See, all that mind trash, we have to stop it. But see, the problem was I had to get to the root of the issue. What is my problem? Why I think everybody's doing that. Not everyone's doing that. So again, God wants that door to be shut, but he wants to bring healing into your heart so that you don't have to stay there. See, it, see God always redeems us. 1 John 1, 9, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from everything, all unrighteousness. That's what I love about him. And so then the other one, I don't have that up here, um, is a bastard curse. And so in Deuteronomy 23, it, or illegitimacy, the Bible says that if you've been illegitimate, there's a curse that goes down 10 generations, 400 years. And in the King James, it's called a bastard curse, or you have illegitimate curse. And so some of the uh, characteristics of that is that you feel like you're on the outside looking in. You never, what a, and I'm not saying that's the only way you can feel that way, but you feel like as though you never can enter in. You're always on the outside looking in. You don't, you don't feel wanted and, and different things like that. The beauty of it, we can repent. We can break that assignment. We can break that curse. See, a lot of times we don't recognize something's um, hovering over us. And God wants us to walk in freedom. The other one is, and I'm going to be ending this soon, is um, sexual fornication, sexual sin. The Bible says flee fornication. The Bible says flee adultery, to not be, have, be in an adulterous relationship. And I didn't write the book. He knows that, that hearts get broken. And then what happens when you have sex outside of a covenant marriage, you have a soul tie that's formed. And in a soul tie, what happens? Two become one flesh. That's for marriage only. And so two become one. And then what happens is if, let's say, that person you're sleeping with has demons, guess what? You get them. And I, we have cast out many demons out of people that have soul ties from all the relations that they've had. And, uh, and it's no joke. And now not everyone has that. All I'm saying is what we have to do is Break a soul tie, renounce the soul tie. First of all, repent for sexual sin. And then repent for the union that you've had with so-and-so. And then, you know, we pray a prayer. Lord, call back, we call back the fragments of our soul to make me whole again and release theirs back to them. Because Corinthians says in 1 Corinthians 6, 16, it says, warns us not to have sexual relationship with someone because you form one, one flesh. And so if that person has spirits, most likely you get them. And let me tell you, it, it's no joke, but, but Jesus, again, says, I mean, one time we were ministering, and um, this girl uh, didn't realize the guy that she connected with was a warlock. And, um, ooh, baby. And so when we took authority, when we were praying over her, this man's voice was coming out of this very petite young lady. And, but you know what? She got gloriously set free. And it was hindering her. She just couldn't move forward in her life. It was hindering relationships with her. And so, again, Jesus wants us 
to be free because he loves us. And, and so, again, the guidelines here are so that we can live an abundant life. The Bible says in John 10.10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He says, but I came to give you that life more abundantly. And so that's what he wants. So even the other way to form a, a unhealthy soul ties to a very controlling individual where there's a lot of codependency. That's another way. It's not only through sexual tie. It, another way is through a very unhealthy, controlling relationship, you know, where there's just that hovering or you can't make a decision without this person. And, you know, it's just really unhealthy. That's another way that you can form an ungodly salt tie. And so, um, and the other thing, the third way to form a salt tie is, let's say you were involved, let's say that girl who was involved with the warlock, okay, and he gave her a gift, and she has it in her home. There could be a, a tie a t connection there. She needs to throw out everything. That was from past relationships. And so um, you can have soul ties like with that girl with Stevie Nicks. Get rid of everything. Cut the soul tie there. Because it was wreaking havoc in her life. And anyway, Stevie Nicks is, is an admitted witch. So why would you want to be aligned with her, right? So... Anyway, and, um, and then also the lastly, I mean, there, oh, no, 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 not lastly, I have much more. Okay, heresies, spirit of error, all right, wrong doctrines. You know, you have the Mormon church, you have uh, Jehovah Witness, you have Christian science, different things like that where it's contrary to the word. Then you have uh, domination and control, manipulation. When there's manipulation and control, when you're very manipulative, that is a form of witchcraft. So, it's, so witchcraft doesn't necessarily mean you're putting a curse on a person. That's one aspect of it. But when there's control, domination, and um, manipulation, that is a form of witchcraft. Where you're always so manipulating and lying and trying to get your, you know, being real slick over there. That's a form of witchcraft. So, um, you know, it's the way you want to get your way and, and it's being domineering. Or else, you know, uh, in other ways, like if you've been involved in a church... Not necessarily that they were a cult, but it wound up becoming a cult where there was just so much religious control where you couldn't make a move without asking them, you know, may I, you know? And then the other one is fantasy, unreality living. I just saw on TV Tucker Carlton, is that his name? Tucker Carlson? Did you see that guy where that lady, or I don't know what it was, said that she was a wolf? And then was jumping around in the forest like a wolf with a purple outfit on and a tail. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Anyway, <laughs> so, but, but it's so demonic. And, and you're getting interviewed for that. The enemy makes a fool of us. He makes a fool of people. Well, this person believes that, that they were really created to be a wolf. They're not really human. Like during the day, they're human. But in the evening, they're a wolf. That's fantasy living. You know, or else you have your imaginary frame. Sometimes you can open the door to, um, you know, a spirits that way, and a lot of times you do. But, but there's so much, I'm going to go there, this binary living, non-binary, you don't know if you're a boy or you're a girl, you're this, you're that. Come on, you're, you, got, you have the equipment. You're either a boy or you're a girl, okay? That's just the bottom line. So, I mean, this is craziness. And it's going, it's this, this culture is getting so outrageous and out there. And these kids that are opening up their heart to this stuff, that is opening themselves. It's very demonically dangerous. Listen, Jesus created, he knows what he was doing. The Spirit of God knew what he was doing when he created us. All right, and so then we have, um, oh, I think that's my last one. All right, so there's probably a lot more, but that's what I thought of, okay? So where demons dwell, well, I wrote here, well, this I heard, demons dwell where access is given. Just as simple as that. And so that's what I said, Lord, I don't want to have any of that. And so I, I was going over this. I said, Lord, I just want to make sure in my heart that I'm not um, being rebellious in any way, that I'm not judging a person in a wrong way or have unforgiveness or bitterness in my heart. See, that's, that's, that's what mostly gets the church people, you know, because we can say, well, I'm not going out to a club and I'm not partying and I'm not doing this. Yeah, well, let's check your heart out. Let's see what the motives of your heart are. And, and that's the thing. We want the uh, Holy Spirit to put, do a Holy Ghost uh, scan and x-ray over us to see where we're at. Not, not to, to put us down or to ridicule, but to, to uh, help us to walk in a place of freedom. And, um, you know, and it's just such a beautiful thing. When a lot of these things, when, when I started getting revelation, 
you know, I remember one time I said to my husband, don't you say anything. One time I said to him, oh, I can't believe how bound I am. Oh, my God. And so I started seeing root issues of areas of my life that I had absolutely no freedom in. Zero. And I was miserable. I had so much fear. And I know you always hear me say that in the panic attacks and the depression. And I, I really, in my natural mind, right, because don't we think this thing through, like, how in the world is reading the Bible, going to church, and talking to Jesus that I've never really seen going to heal me? That was how I was thinking. I don't know anybody else ever thought that. But I'll tell you, he came, the Bible says he came to set the captives free. You know, Jesus is my deliverer. He's my healer. And, and he turned my life around. Was it always just instantaneous? No. No, it was process, like what we're talking about and going through and going through deliverance and saying, you know what, I'm getting free. Because a lot of the churches will say, deliverance is not for today. Well, I beg to differ with you. That's why we have so many messed up people in the church that are living secret lives, okay? They don't know how to get free. And so if you read through the Gospels, in, in uh, Mark chapter 1, the very first thing Jesus did was cast a demon out of someone. 39 times in the Gospel, Jesus cast out demons. And he says, I give you power. Why does he give us power and authority to tread over scorpions and serpents if we're not going to dress this stuff? I mean, it's ridiculous. So anyway, we're going to pray, all right? You can stand. And um, we're going to pray because I know there's a lot here. That's why I gave you a handout. When you go home, check your heart out. And ask the Lord to show you where you're at. You may think, well, I'm not really doing anything. Well, are you praying are you reading right. you're not doing us a favor it's for you and um you know and that was when i i decided I, i'm going to do whatever it takes because i couldn't stand so you have to hate where you're at and when when you're sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired that's when you'll do what it takes yeah. to get free and that's where i was at i thought i can't be bothered my family had a fit my mother had a fit when I, you know, I started going to church, I said, Ma, what do you want me to go to? You'd rather me be in a club smoking a joint, but if I'm going to church, you have a fit? I mean, come on. And so, but she was afraid at the time when I got saved, Jim Jones, remember he was having everybody drinking the Kool-Aid out in Guyana? I mean, it's not funny. I mean, all these people died, but that's what she thought I was involved with because it wasn't this denomination I grew up in, you know? So, um, but then, you know, she came around, started coming to church, but, but, I'll tell you, it was the best thing I ever did. And Jesus is no respecter of, per no respecter of persons, and he wants every one of us to walk in freedom because he loves us. He, lo he just wants us free, and he loves us, right? And so um, I wrote out a prayer, but, I, you know, I always have a hard time reading my prayers. But you, we, you can go along with that, all right? All right, so first of all, I'm just going to pray. So, Lord, we just thank you. For, for your amazing love. We thank you, Lord, that you died on the cross with each and every one of us on your mind. You took the crown of thorns on your head, oh God, so that we didn't have to have emotional pain, that we didn't have to have mental breakdowns and panic attacks and anxiety. We, didn't ha we don't have to have that because you willingly were brutalized for our freedom. Lord, we thank you that you took the, the, the beating on your back for our healing, for all aspects of healing. We thank you that, that you carried that cross and, and you died and, and, and you bled out for us. Your death, Lord God, is not in vain. And we thank you, Lord, that you have bottled up each of our tears and you have the hairs upon our head numbered because you love us so very much. And you're, you're attentive. Your word says that you are attentive to the cries of your children. You hear every heart. You know our heartbeat. You know when we're lying on our pillow thinking about things. You know how we're, we can get so confused. And you know the different places in our heart that, that aren't aligned with you, but you're there for us. Lord, your word says that you will never leave us 
nor forsake us. You will never, ever abandon us, and we can trust you. Your word says when your father and mother forsake you, you're there for us. And we thank you for that. And so, Lord, we do repent. Where, where, where our lives, where we've lived loosely and, and our hearts are, where our lives are an open door, where there's open doors in our life. And Lord, we choose to shut those doors. And, and right now, you know, to yourself, you can say those doors that you know, if you have any, that need to be shut. And, you know, Lord, let's say, for example, I repent for rebellion. Lord, I repent for drug addiction or fornication or or I didn't even talk about pornography, or, Lord, I repent for looking at porn. I repent, oh, God, for judging and being mean and, and dishonest. Lord, I repent. I repent for, for being offended and walking in unforgiveness. Lord, I ask you to heal my heart. And, Lord, I choose to break ungodly soul ties and, and, you know, and again, we do this one-on-one, -on -one, but if you have um, certain people that you need to renounce and break a soul tie, I'm going to give you an example. I choose to, to break an ungodly soul tie with whomever that person is. I choose to renounce that tie. I cut and sever it. I call back the fragments of my soul to make me whole again, and I release his or hers back to them. God, I no longer want to be tied to that individual. I don't want to cut the emotional tie in Jesus' name. And, Lord, I loose the power of your blood over my life. I, I, I just thank you that you came to set me free. Lord, where there's any kind of sickness or oppression or turmoil in my life, I reject the lies of the enemy. I come out of agreement with him. I break his assignment over my life. And, Lord, I choose tonight to 100% totally surrender to you and sell out to you. Lord, I thank you for your amazing love. Help me to have a hunger for your word. Help me, oh God, to, to know truth and that, that I will discern truth and not be led astray by a demonic angel of light. And Lord, I thank you for my freedom, my family's freedom, my deliverance, and I decree it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. So you can take this home and read through it, but I mean, there's so many different things that we can pray through. But ask the Holy Spirit to show you if you have any open doors. And if not, amen. And then as we move on, we're going to deal with the different occult spirits. We're going to deal with rejection, you know, and the spirit of shame is a big one. Right. We're, we're going to address all these different issues in, in walking in freedom and how the Lord wants us to identify these roots and uproot them. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, be blessed. Have